Welcome to New Japan Puro Wrestling Review. I am your host, Andresi, and right to the right on screen, left in real life, uh, it is my the other host, Melball. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. It is a cold morning here in Canada, but we cannot yeah. complain about that because, man, <laughs> do we have some ish to talk about today. Andre, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. A little chilly. Got the blanket on, covering my legs, keeping my footsies warm because I'm sitting in my basement. Got my hoodie on to keep me warm, keep, <laughs> keep me going. Minus 35 out. Uh, yeah. But but we are here to talk some great professional wrestling, some mm-hmm. exciting matches from uh, three nights of the world of the World Tag and Super Junior Tag League, starting on December third. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but before we get to those, I want to thank our sponsors over at Rogue Energy. I can scan the car code right down there in the bottom right corner, as Mel has indicated, and use the code OLE Pods for ten percent off your order. Thanks to our friends at Rogue Energy and our friends at uh. At our local establishment. So <laughs> I, so we are going to get into it. You ready to get into it, Mel? Oh, I am ready to get into it. These were three incredible nights of shows. I can't wait to talk about them. Let's I get into it, man. Control. So we are starting with the December 3rd show from the World Tagging. Mm-hmm. We're going to start with my pick. <laughs> I'm going to start with the pick. Uh, it's Gabriel Kidd and Alice Colin for... Coggin, the graduates of the LA Dojo, taking on United Empire's Aussie Open, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis. I, I thought, wonderful way to start again. One of my favorite tag teams in Aussie Open. They, I absolutely love these guys every time I watch them wrestle. And they are taking on uh, LA Dojo, who have been just fighting so hard throughout this tournament, but have been coming up short every time. And it, it, it's almost heartbreaking every time you see them lose because these two are fighting so hard. And they're working so so much, but again, you're going up against a team like Aussie Open, who to me are are the to me going into this tournament were the odds on favorites. Again, I think they are still the odds on favorites to win this, but like my in, in my heart, I want TMDK to win it personally. If it's not them, I want it to be Aussie Open. But it's it you, you watch them and they struggle and they get so close, but then. It's just that watching their struggle and their their just drive to keep trying to win in this tournament has been awesome. Because like again, watching Cogging and Kid when they were in strong, they were enjoyable to watch. But again, neither had much of character until both graduated and their characters kind of came out. And both both of them are really showing this character. Mister Sassy Pants himself, Gabriel Kid, has been doing great, as you like to call Mister Sassy Pants. And then Coglin, the his, sassy pants. yeah, hit Coglin and his Android in this, I will not go down at like how he plays it. I absolutely find him phenomenal. But then you got Ozzy open who I, I adore this team. Like there's this beautiful overhead toss by Coglin, Just like, he just nothing. Like, and he was, I think it was to, to, to Fletcher. Like he, he just tosses him over his head. Like he's like, he's a, like he's a junior. Like he's mm-hmm. tossing, like if he was tossing Leo Rush. And like I just don't, one of those smaller juniors, right? Like mm-hmm. it's just if you picked up the Russian toss, and that's how he tosses Fletcher. It's crazy the power this guy has. Um, just Coggin into cast, catching Davis coming off of a splash in the corner, and Davis is how big he is. Another over the head belly belly. Davis is a big boy, and he just hucks him over his head. No, like the the power on this dude is insane. Mm-hmm. But and then um. But in the end, the end of this match came down to uh, Coggin gets super kicked by Fletcher, and then Kid gets like just smacked in the face by Davis. I don't know if it was a slapper or a forearm, but he just gets cracked in that face. Um, and then, uh, which which sends or the super kick sent Cog sent Coglin out, and then Ao hit the uh, sandwich clothesline and Coriolis onto Gabriel Kid, and Davis got the pin and the win. Again, it was another one where. Yeah, the LA Dojo is coming so close. They're getting there, but it's just they're coming up just short. But AO, again, takes another two points to keep themselves at the top of this divi- of this tournament. Like, there looks it, – it almost looks like they're, they're, they're going to be in the finals if it, if their last two matches don't fall apart on them. We're going to – we'll get to that after the next show we're going to talk about. As long as <laughs> – like, as long as – actually, they have only have one more match, I think, because they have mm-hmm. a forfeit 
on the 11th. So they have one more match. If they can win that, they're set. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. But mm-hmm. damn, this was absolutely phenomenal. I absolutely love this match. Yeah, I, I have not a whole lot to add to that. I didn't take a whole ton of notes on this one, just from start to finish. Very, very solid um, match from these guys. Um, again, as you mentioned, you know, just the pure power coming out of Coughlin. The guy is in a constant state of flexing. He's just constantly just looking intimidating as all hell right now. Um, the only thing I would add to that was there was a great chop spot between um, Kid and Davis, um, which we know Kid can chop. Um, we've seen him chopping since since oh, he started. Sure. To, to see him go toe-to-toe with Davis was pretty impressive because, as you mentioned, Davis is not a little boy. He's a big boy. He, he tenderizes them titties pretty good. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> to add on this, that's going to be said a lot, this one. Just fair warning. <laughs> yeah. No. But I, I thought absolutely phenomenal match. It just a, mm-hmm, a mm-hmm. great a great way to open a show. 100%. Yeah. So from here, we are going to move on to the next match in the evening. And that is Bishamon, the team of Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto, taking on the United Empires, Aaron Hanari, and the Great Okan. Again, this is, an, this is a must. This is like one of those matches that both these teams needed to win to really cement themselves in this tournament. It neither got eliminated from a loss, but it's a real struggle going into the next show for them if they do not have a win. In the end, uh, Bishamon did get the win with uh, the Ush- uh, Ushiguroshi kick combo into the Shoto, and they did pin Aaron Hanare to get the win for uh, Bishamon. Again, slightly disappointed. I wanted to see my per- – like. My finals, I either wanted TMDK and Aussie Open or UE versus UE in the final. Those are my two that I wanted. But uh, you can't, especially looking at uh, Aaron Har and, and, and Ocon, I can see them not being in the finals because they're, again, a, a pretty much a brand new tag team, even though they've been working together for, for years. But you get the former winners have to kind of be kept in contention, in my opinion. No, I have to agree, and especially we we had been talking about how um, uh, Yoshihashi and and Goto, you know, both of us are kind of in that boat where it's like we we have seen them functioning um, as a tag team for quite some time. Um, I I personally would like to see um, a newer team kind of come in there, um, and and kind of step up to them. That being said, we have seen an incredible amount of growth from both Yoshihashi and Goto as a tag team over this tournament. Um, a, a lot more unification, I feel, um, this tournament than we've seen them um, before, which is incredible because they've already been very unified um, in chaos for years. Um, I felt that this match was really fun. Um, you had mentioned it in the video beforehand. I'd like to touch on it um, this time. The uh, the chops that uh, Hanare does in the ropes um, that are similar to the ones Seamus does. You had mentioned last time they seemed a little rougher than Seamus's. Especially this time, I have to agree. Um, the the just the thuds you could hear. Um, I think it was coming off of uh, uh, Yoshihashi's chest in in that <laughs> kind of move was just brutal. Um, I I really enjoyed this. Um, I also wanted to add that I, I really enjoy how the Great Okan, um, again that endless versatility of his throwing in the hair every once in a while yeah. using it as a, a, a almost a Togo-esque style kind of choking device there. You know, I mean, you got to do what you got to do to try to pick up those points. But as you mentioned in the end, it, it wasn't quite enough for the United Empire to pick up a win over Bushimon. Yeah, yeah. sadly enough, Bushimon getting the win here. Not sadly, but I I, I do like Bushimon get a win. But again, mm-hmm. I was pulling for the UE. Come on, grounds up. Right. I love these guys. I love, I love the U, UE. It's, it's a big fan there. So, 100%. but from he- from here, we are going to move on to the next match of the evening. And this is the match that pissed me off more than anything. And it was uh, – it, it, there was two reasons. Um, the amount of dominance that uh, House of Torture got on Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer was almost complete bull. Like, just – I it, it took me out of this match. It took mm-hmm. me so much out of this match. I'm like, this had a ma- been a match of guys just smashing the shit out of each other. And that actually would have been an enjoyable match from House of Torture, but it was them dominating Suzuki and Archer almost the entire match, and that just 
-hmm. it didn't make logical sense that the two men that pretty much beat the crap out of everybody else get, even though there was cheating, and they didn't cheat a lot in this match. That's the or was this mm -hmm. was that the other match? Um, it's a house of torture match. So they, they, I do have show interferes, so they were obviously at ringside at some point. Yeah, um, it was. Oh, sorry, that was the the match a couple. We're, uh, the, on the next show that they, they yeah we'll get to that ish but it, just, <laughs> it, it, it felt so weird to have suzuki just selling almost the entire match mm -hmm. for, for house of torture and then house of torture picking up their first two points on suzuki and archer i was just like aha uh -huh. i got day it was like a dagger to the heart like it's just it was uh, it was yeah I, I and, it, and it was it was a game it was a gang attack that got you yeah. put on top of suzuki for the win so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the the best part of the match was at the beginning when um, Archer was doing his intro, and his thing has been to intimidate um, Milano throughout this this tournament. What he wasn't expecting, or maybe he didn't know that he was down there, but Shingo Takagi was actually on commentary at this point, hiding behind Shingo. I think that was the only time that I saw Archer actually stop and be like. Mm. Okay, that's a former world champion. I don't think I'm gonna mess with that one. I, <laughs> but that's what, I want to see that match. I want to see that. Hey, I mean, I wouldn't not want to see that either. That's two powerhouse men and two men who are not willing to back down to the other one. I mean, Shingo wasn't bothered. He didn't even get out of his seat. So yeah. <laughs> that I think was the best part of the match, and that was yeah. before House of Torture to even come out. So yeah, that's pretty saying much. a lot. <laughs> pretty much. So we're going to get away from the torture. Move on to the main event of the of the, of the uh, December 3rd show, uh, mm -hmm. the Night 6. Uh, or was it Night 6? Yeah, Night 6. Uh, seven, seven. Tag league. No, this is 6. 7 was the next one. No, well, I have them labeled wrong. Oh, maybe it's like seven. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm I'm crazy. So just 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 so yeah. This has aware. been a very whatever whatever. The December third so. show, the main event <laughs> of the evening is Mel's pick. It is uh, Team Bebop, Toriano mm -hmm. and Hiroshi Tanash taking on Los Angeles de Japón in uh, Sonata in Tetsuya Night. And Mel, take her away. You know, this was such a fun match. I mean, I, I knew this was going to be a fun one coming in because Yano and Tana, as much as they are, you know, taking this tournament fairly seriously, they like to add that kind of goofy Yano-esque spin onto it. Um, mm -hmm. But how again, how dreamy is Tana Hashi coming out with that beautiful pompadour and that sexy little jacket every time Hashi, i like hey i mean a girl's got a thirst trap on something right i don't have chase owens anymore i gotta go on Tanahashi. um <laughs> great opening spot um with uh with naito and tana um i really love how naito um just does his mind games in in everything that he does he's there very much so a performer and entertainer um as much for the crowd as as for himself i feel like a lot of what he does is just to amuse himself um throughout the matches and it works for me because it's great entertainment um yano trying to do the paradise lock absolutely hilarious where he's trying to get it all done then turns to milano like what the heck why aren't you helping me giving in you milano's just like man i mean i wish i understood the japanese commentary a little bit more it would have been funny to hear milano yelling you know instructions at him um throughout that um subsequently him getting obviously put in the paradise lock himself by the a little bit more educated, we'll say, <laughs> Sonata. Um, and also um, um, Tanahashi, both of them getting put into that Paradise Lock. That lock is my absolute favorite. I know it's it's one of those things where it's like, it's almost like a gimmick. You, you know, you look at it and it's kind of like, yeah, okay, they can't move. <laughs> uh -huh. They got to get a drop kick to the butt. But that's, it, it adds to the overall entertainment and provides a nice... Um, kind of quiet point in the match before it ramps it up again for us. Yeah. Um, massive Destino by um, by Naito on Yano there to uh, to pin Yano. I, I and that was another one where Naito took his sweet frack in time, capitalizing on that cover. And I'm sitting here going, oh, <laughs> holding the O on the Destino for the cover. 
1130 at night, I don't think my neighbors really like me. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> Andre, what do you think of this one? I, I had great fun with this man and man. Again, it's that Naito and Yano uh, camaraderie that I really do enjoy mm-hmm. between this team. It, it, it's really fun to watch how these two like interact with each other in that sense. Um, seeing like just some like the dragon screws from Tana, I think, are just the way he does them. A lot of other people do dragon screws, but he just does them in such a way you just it's just it just looks that perfect flow. It, it, you you just love it, and, and the, the just the ornate ability from him it's it's so good. But yeah, like I love the squatting from Yano and Tana. It's just and the fact that they do it in the matches, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, but it, I, again, wonderful way to cap off a night of professional wrestling. Hundred percent. What a I don't. I I didn't do my point updates on this night, so I'm not going to give a point update until the next night of the World Tag League. I'll just. No I, I'm going to give some eliminations on that one too. Perfect. So Perfect. we, if you're ready, we are going to move on to the uh, night. I think no, this is night seven of the World Junior Tag League. I have it written down here. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Night seven World Junior Tag League, and the next one's the night seven of the World Tag League because there's only two left. Ah, yeah, okay. Go. That was that's nice. Yeah, because there's two left on each one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, cra- I'm not. Cra- I'm not crazy. <laughs> so uh, debatable. <laughs> we're gonna start out with Kevin Knight and Kushida taking on Chris Bay and Ace Austin. Uh, already mathematically eliminated are Kushida and Kevin Knight with only two points. Mm-hmm. Ace Austin and uh, Chris Bay actually are on top of the division right now with mm-hmm. uh, with ten points going into this match. Mm-hmm. Um. Great match overall. In the end, Bay did get ultimate finesse onto uh, on tonight, and Ace Austin hit the fold, and Bay Chris Chris Bay pinned Kevin Knight to get the win. Uh, but again, absolutely phenomenal opener. The athleticism off all four of these guys is absolutely tremendous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and then, there, oh, sorry, oh, one no, more thing. Ahead, go, no, no, the, go ahead, go ahead. The way Knight Ronad. Bay off the top rope, and again, when he leaps up, he he latches the 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 thighs onto your head, not just cra- grabs you with the feet, mm-hmm. and rotted him off, and then proceeded to hit the electric chair drop kick onto Bay, where he, like Kushida put him, in. and when he drop kicks him, he's up that high, he's kicking him in the chest, like mm-hmm. Okada, man, you you're you don't get the top drop kick anymore, man. It's it's all about it's all about Kevin Knight now, man. It really is. Everyone's coming from o- for Okada's spots, man. He's got to got to reevaluate a few things there. Um, the the Dermis Destroyer that um, Alex, or sorry, that um, Ace Austin and and Chris Bay have kind of um, uh, maybe borrowed from Ishimori and and ELP. Um, endlessly disgusting to me. I just hope that their nails are taken care of and not you know long like mine. Um, I don't know if you you got. The, the same thing I did um, out of this match, a, a little bit of heat that I was picking up between Kushida and Austin, particularly at the uh, the end there. Not a yeah, a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if it's just maybe there's um, that they were doing it for the the match, the help to the, the intensity of the match, or or drive that, or maybe we're just getting to a point where everyone's a little aggravated with each other at the end of these tournaments. We don't know, but um, I felt that it did kind of add to the overall feel and intensity of the match. Definitely made um, Kushida and Knight feel like they were really, really fighting to, to kind of earn these points. Um, the There was um, one point where there's a lot of knee kicking that I got very uncomfortable with, where um, the, the kicking was coming towards the knee and um, buckling it backwards. My biggest concern, obviously, hyperextension there. Um, knee injuries, very, very um, hard to, to recover from and, and take a, a long time to recover from. So just take care of our knees there, guys. Um, last thing I wanted to say was there was a cutter spot that looked really, really super cool, but there was the typical North American style prolonged setup for it that that I did not like where everyone gathered and they were standing there and they were just like kumbaya my lord just 
play something around. You guys are experienced enough, you know, figure something out, muck with each other, distract each other, do something to make that look a little bit more organic. Otherwise, I felt that this was a fantastic opener to start off the rest of this show because I really couldn't pick a favorite match on this show. It was so lit from start to finish. Well, there's one I could easily not pick, but that was well, yeah. Another. But yeah. there's four. There's four really good <laughs> matches on the show, and it was hard mm. to pick. I think I just went with my heart on my pick. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> but, we're gonna move to the next match of the evening, and as Wild Hips, Clark Connors, and Russ gets Gucci taking on Flying Tigers, Robbie Eagle, and Tiger Mask. The, the first note I have in here, well, the, actually, the first note is both teams are mathematically eliminated. The next note mm. is beer, beer, beer. Oi, oi, oi. Robbie it. Eagle started doing a chant because this was a cheering crowd. He started doing a chant of, uh, mm. of Robbie, Robbie, Robbie. Oi, oi, oi. He got, a, he got the crowd to do it like a few times. And this is where uh, Kurt Connors and Taguchi started going, beer, beer, beer. Oi, oi, oi. As they're holding the beers in their hand and drinking them. I just, I absolutely laughed at that. That was just absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. But again, we got a lot of more pants down, pants down, uh, un- underoos out. Let's let's smash people in the face with our with our with our own with our with our undie butts. Uh, <laughs> again, you got a lot of that again in the undie butts. You know, they make it funny. Uh, in the end, a Connors pulled his pants down, but Tiger Mask stopped the butt smash. Then Taguchi tries, but Tiger stops it, and the ref goes, or uh, sorry, and he goes for the roll up, but Connors hits the. Like he does like a roll over like like a sunset flip onto mm-hmm. Taguchi, but Connors hit the bum IA to uh Tiger Mask, which sent Taguchi rolling up onto uh Tiger and his butt in his face and uh got the, and he got the win he got the win. So Wild Hips picking up another two points here. Um absolutely funny. And after the match. Um, they, they decided to thong their underwear all weird, like pull it into the ass crack for some weird ass reason. I don't you know. know what they, they did there. They did the Rhea Ripley thing where they, they inserted the, the underwear up the butt. And then the second part of the underwear was actually underneath the butt cheeks. So we got a butt lift on both of these yeah, guys. D- don't I need saw to see way that more of Taguchi's butt than I wanted to. I could see more of Connor's butt. I'm not going <laughs> to complain about that. And, they, and then they're they're having their beer, and they give one to Robbie Eagles after the match, and then they offer some to Tiger if he doesn't want a beer. So they just pour some in his hand, and he and he wipes it on his face. He wipes it on his face to well, get yeah. the smell of Taguchi's butt off. He'd rather smell beer than smell Taguchi's butt. <laughs> well, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, so. I don't even very, like very. beer. <laughs> Um, there was one point where I, I did want to mention um, the um, Taguchi was luring Connors at one point where he had just gotten wrecked pretty much. He was luring Connors to into the corner to do a tag with his beer, like, come on, come get it. And Connors just crawling along. It really is like his beer is like his spinach and he's Popeye. It's fantastic. Um, but the, the one spot that made me just laugh my butt off was the hip attacks that Kiduchi was doing on um, Eagles and Tiger. Oh, like but, back and forth? Yeah, it started with Eagles and then went to Tiger and then went to Eagles and Tiger. And then Connors was holding them doing a move that I'm calling the hippie hippie shakes, where he was supposed to be doing hip attacks, but it just looked like he was doing a Shakira dance. And then Taguchi, um, then being attacked, um, or sorry, Taguchi attacking his own partner after Mask and um, Eagles were able to oh, reverse he backed up into his face and yeah. giving Clark Connors a very nice Brazilian lap dance from his own partner. That 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 was fun. That was the fun part of this match. <laughs> for me it's just butts yeah. in faces butts in faces butts in faces as long as it's yeah. not my face <laughs> yeah. i know what you mean again great great match like honestly mm-hmm. both these teams absolutely phenomenal but sadly both are no do neither has a shot at getting into the finals at this Correct. point now so so moving on to the next match uh we have the team of teton and bushi from los and 
Los Ingobernables de Japón, taking on Dick Togo and Show from House of Torture. House of Torture are mathematically eliminated. Tito and Bushi want to keep picking up points because they want to stay in contention to get, mm-hmm. excuse me, to that uh, second place because I don't know if they can get the first because I think Bay and uh, Austin might have that look. There's a, again, it's 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 still right really now. close in this. It's still really close right now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in uh, actually, I this was one of the banner matches from Show and Togo. Like when I saw them wrestle Catch Twenty Two again, it was like a really good match. This again, working with Titan Bush, even with the cheating crap that they did in this, it was still mm-hmm. quite a good in ring match. Uh, mm-hmm. There's still sots in the balls, things like that. Just you really don't need to see it every single host torch match. But again, mm-hmm. in the end, um, uh, the wooden spot for LJ that where they do the drop kit where t does a drop kit off the second and uh, Bushi does the spine buster. I love mm-hmm. that. I really, really do. Uh, in the end, though, um, Bushi and t hit the MX stomp combo and uh, Bushi pinned Togo for the win. I think I actually sent you a, a message um, about what they've been calling that. It's I, I think it's the immortal stomp that they've been okay, calling I'll their finish. Down. <laughs> I send you a lot of crap on Instagram, and that yeah, was and I miss half of it. <laughs> That's the problem with this girl being the social marketer. She sends a crap ton of a lot of crap that might send not be Facebook Messenger. <laughs> I'll see it better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, though. This match um, it was actually one of the better matches that we got out of House of Torture in this tournament for all the cheating that they, they did do. Um, I just wanted to point out the uh, the mask that Teton was wearing tonight, I think, is my favorite mask that I've seen on this entire tournament, which is incredible because he's had a lot of really fun, extravagant masks. This one was in in like comparison to like the one in his in image right here. Very, very tame, actually more comparable to Bushi's. But the color of it, I felt was very, very matchy. Um, I really liked how it looked on him. It was like that maroon kind of color with a yellow gold accenting. Looked really, really sharp on him. Um, Something I also noticed, I don't know if you did, Andre, at the beginning when House of Torture um, usually does their like too sweet thing, instead of doing a too sweet, they did a cigarette thing. And I found that very suspect. Um, We've been speculating a little bit that, you know, maybe House of Torture should not or is not considered an affiliate of Bullet Club anymore. Uh, to be honest, I mean, I've not considered them a, a Bullet Club faction. In a day. I've never considered them a full Bullet Club faction. So I, I personally would like to see this continue. It, it almost angers me when I see them throw up a too sweet because I'm like, you don't deserve that. So what were you going to say there, Andre? Uh, I can't remember if it was night one or two when Chase Owens was on commentary. He did say that they're still paying them, giving them their money, the merch money. So uh, being that they're yeah. still paying them merch money, they're still part of Bullet Club. So I would he say said, as long as the merch, be a part long- of my club, you wear something that says Bullet Club or you throw up my hand signal. If you're not throwing up either one of those, I don't think you deserve a royalty check. That's just he, my Clark, opinion. Uh, Chase said they're they're still paying the royalties, so they're still in in the in the club. So well, Chase Owens, deliver a message to your good friend Jay White to uh, maybe reevaluate no. some some team members here on uh, the weakest link. Um, Let's hope. Yeah, I I oh yeah, and also Desperado on commentary for this match that was fun. Um, I have no idea. I don't pay attention to commentary because I don't understand them. <laughs> Um, the only thing I did want to note on um, with this one, it, it bothers me a lot. I've mentioned it before. I love seeing faction unity. I hate that House of Torture has been the example of it in this tournament. Um, I don't like how they've been doing it in that they come out and they're a deci- are trying to be a deciding factor in the matches that they do. But it pisses me off when um, I see, you know, Teton and Bushi being beat up by Evil and Yujiro, and I see no Sonata and Naito, or even Shingo. You know, I get that or they Hiromu. want to, yeah, anybody, literally anybody at this point. And the same thing with Chaos. You know, we see Yujiro and Evil, same thing, but we don't see Yoshihashi or Goto. 
I, I understand that there's a certain degree of honor in defending yourself and being able to, to take care of yourself in situations like that. But these are your team members. If you would not want to be getting your ass kicked in a four on one beat down, maybe go through the, you know, flow chart in your head of, okay, the littlest guy in our group is getting beat up by the biggest one in another, maybe we should do something. But that's just me. In reality, it's just, yeah, I get it. And it, 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 none of it makes any sense. Anything house of torture no. makes no sense in this, in these days. So there's that audio yeah. out there that's making the rounds from that comedian. It doesn't make fucking sense. It doesn't. House of torture no. doesn't. <laughs> Not even in the slightest. So let's, no. we're going to move off of the torture into yes. my pick of the evening. And that is the team of yo leo as i like as i'm come calling them now uh yo and leo rush taking on the my favorite boys the sauce hearts al lindeman alex zane um a great great match there's a great opening spot where uh zane actually and leo working like wrestling and just the movements between the two off the start with zane ending like off coming off the ropes and getting a double knee off the ropes and then hitting the running corkscrew sent on Absolutely great opening sequence from these two. A great way to really push the athleticism for both men. Um, just uh, Leo, some of the great stuff he's doing. Um, the like it's a suicide dive onto Lindemann on the outside. Just he comes out like a flipping rocket, man. Like the dude is just it, it look. He looks so crisp doing them. It just like we talk about Maya Uitani, how hers are so wild and crazy. She comes through. Leo's is like a just shooting out like a rocket, like just tight shoot through. And, and again, it's that, but again, his, it makes sense for him having come out like a rocket. Myers has to look wild or it would look weird for her. You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. but he, that rocket style coming out looks really good for him and just absolutely phenomenal from all, from all these teams. Um, Lindemann getting the judo throw te- and, um, and tags in uh, Zane goes up, but Leo comes off the back of Yo hitting Zane off the top, knocking him to the floor. But, and, and then Lindemann, it just, that just absolutely, coming off the back of Yoda to knock him off, it looked absolutely phenomenal. But just mm-hmm. all these guys, just the, the crazy athleticism in this match was just awesome. Um, but in the end, uh, Lindemann hit a backdrop driver onto Yo, and they hit the German and Jackknife, but, but only get a two on Yo. Yo kicks out, but he gets, um, Yo gets the European clutch on Alex Zane and pick up the win like out of nowhere. Like that European clutch came out of nowhere to get the win. And slightly disappointing because I'm a big fan of my sauce hearts, but yo, Leo keeping themselves alive in this tournament, keeping themselves within like spitting distance of getting that second place. An absolutely phenomenal match, man. Just everything from all these guys. The power from Lindemann coming out of that little, like the, his size is awesome. The craziest athleticism from a guy as big as Zane is, is, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, just great match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, I actually don't have a ton to add to that, except for uh, Zane's um, little combo that he did with Leo and um, Yo in the corner where he Frankensteiner's uh, Yo. Mm followed by the the German um, to uh, let go of Roosh, or Roosh, Rush. <laughs> um, then he, um, Yo got uh, followed up by a German also um, on to Rush, where he just flipped him right over to a splash. A Lindemann? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, really super cool spot. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention was, um, again, the, the attitude change in Yo, really, really apparent and evident in this one. Um, I don't know what happened throughout the match, but him and Lindemann started really trading some stiff shots um, about halfway through. I did notice that they, professionally speaking, they held it together until the end of that match. But after that bell rung, definite uh, tension and intensity still kind of lingering, um, especially, again, between Yo and Lindemann. Um, definitely set up 
uh, something to, to see in a one-on-one -on -one potentially, though I don't think that one-on-one -on -one Yo is quite ready for the smoke that, that Lindemann would be ready to to give him. But otherwise, I, I, I agree with you. This match, again, huge, huge, huge. This show, I, I struggled to pick a favorite match in this because every single match, even the House of Torture one, really, really amazing and enjoyable. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Like, I can't, I, again, I've been talking the praises of Alex Zane and Eldon in this entire tournament. Mm -hmm. They have been the biggest surprise for me this tournament. Again, I became a huge fan of Alex Zane earlier this year, while really getting exposed to him with Super Juniors and only seeing him in a few matches here and there from GCW. Mm -hmm. And I've become a huge fan of this man. I'm a huge fan of Lindemann because of Super Juniors and this tournament. And then Yo Leo have just been an awesome tag team, just really rolling together, I, I find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Working very, very well together. I agree. Yeah. And then you and then you got Mel's pick of the main event, and that is the team of Catch-22, Francesco Akira, and uh, TJP from the United Empire taking on Suzuki Guns, Doki, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Mel, take it away. And you have to obviously know exactly why I picked this match, and that was because of that finish. So let's get into this. Um, the start of this match, TJP and Kanemaru having a fantastic start to this match. Um, the veterans, arguably the, the more senior guys of, of the team, kind of getting into it, setting up the pace for the rest of this match. Um, also want to just point out and shout out, Doki it looks to be in the best shape I've seen him in since rejoining NJPW. His arms are insane looking right now. Just got a kudos to that um i don't know what the submission is um named um you're better at the names with this than i am it's the one that tjp does where he starts off with the um looks like he's going to do the sharpshooter rolls oh, them Moodle. over yeah breaks on the uh, the knee a few times before going into the bridge i love that finish um i believe kept on he's here uh does a variation of it um, I well, she does a she just does a sharpshooter that that like a like a arc back yeah, into the this is the actual muda lock which is actually yeah. the, the great mudas cross them at the at the at the ankle and then go I back think, and pull them the in the neck. Yeah. yeah yeah that is very, the actual very fun lock. submission I absolutely love it and the way TJP pulls it off too it's just so smooth the way he just flows into it it's almost Zack Saber Jr level good of a uh, transition there i absolutely love it um let's see here uh kenomaru when he finally gets back into the ring for the second time um this is after doki's been getting a little wrecked throughout um the the middle part of the match um kenomaru comes in vicious um, absolutely savage. I love seeing Kanemaru get to this level because you know that the level intensity of the match is going to go up even more. And we definitely saw that. Um, the swinging DDT. Um, I didn't write down who did that. I want to say it was Kanemaru. Um, it was absolutely perfect. I feel it was Kanemaru on TJP that I saw. It was when I'm Kanemaru looking at my notes. I can't remember. I can't remember where that was. Um, I and have a of bunch course, of notes for this match. I got to shout it out. The Doki Choki, Andre. We got the Doki Choki. Not <sighs> once, but twice. And it was great. I absolutely loved it. I love, love saying it. Love pulling it out. I'm just going to flat out say it's an incredible move. That's an incredible move. Yes, it is. You if, it was incredible, Akira would have if it was incredible, Akira would have tapped out. I'm just saying the, the the vampire has gotten a certain snitch to tap out to it. So I'm just going to say it's an effective move. <laughs> um, I absolutely love the Doki Choki. Um, it, it was such a fun, fun move. Um, Kenamaru, though, being very, very smart, pulling red shoes um, into the way to, to um, break up a, a move there. Um, I believe it was Akira who ended up, up uh, running into red shoes, taking him yeah. out. Um, smart, smart man. I'm sure you love that since you were calling for uh, riches to be fired a few shows ago. Um, when you don't do your job properly, geez. <laughs> the uh, satellite DDT on uh, TJP 
absolutely incredible by Kanemaru. Really, really shows the the heel master's experience. I actually mm-hmm. remember watching um, some old um, footage of of Great Muda and um, oh, I can't remember who Muda was facing. I want to say it was Masawa. I'm not entirely sure, but I saw a very young Kanemaru as a young lion um, in Marufuji's corner, and it was just. He looks exactly the same. The man hasn't aged. It's absolutely incredible. At the end, though, um, we had a suplex de la luna um, done by Doki onto Akira for the pin. This match was, from start to finish for me, just high impact, high speed. It was exactly what I, if I'm comparing it to stardom, what I expect out of anything involving Azumi, Kugoma, Starlight Kid, or even, um, what was the last one? And on just some kind of high speed, high intensity match. That was what it was comparable to for the girls. Andre, what do you feel about this one? Absolutely phenomenal match. Like these guys, like it, both, like I'm a huge fan of Cash Wing too. Doki, I, I, I can take really Doki and Kanemaru again. They're not like particularly my favorite superstars or wrestlers in njpw but again they're they're all you put them in the ring they always put on a good match they never put on dull matches there's just all just the athleticism from all these guys in this one was absolutely fun the electric chair sent on from cash 22 i say it every time we talk about one of their matches i love that electric chair sent on like just tossing a here off his shoulders but again it's just it, it looks effective it looks like it works it, again there it, some great stuff and then uh that 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 slingshot dd what was it called this DDT de la Luna, whatever you want to call it. Uh, oh, Doki uh, Suplex de la Luna is the uh, the finish that. That's Doki a wheelbarrow. Should... Wheelbarrow into the dragon. But what's yeah. his his slingshot move? A slingshot TDT. Oh, over the um, it's a daybreaker. Yeah, his daybreaker, abs absolutely phenomenal. Like just the key hit that in this match to get uh, TJ and almost had a TJP at like mm-hmm. two point nine. Was when he 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 kicked out like I'm, I'm literally typing in daybreaker right now so <laughs> there for, next, for the next show but yeah i, I absolutely just just perfect mm-hmm. like yeah, ddt is just the way he does it absolutely phenomenal oh so good so good yeah. but all these guys everything they're doing is absolutely phenomenal i'm gonna quickly mm-hmm. go over i'm gonna switch over to my notepad um <laughs> i meant to scroll down uh you can all see it there it's gonna be flashy because i'm sharing it and it's being a pain in the ass i don't know what this, i've never <laughs> actually shared a word document before um so you have uh you see where we're at after seven nights who's still in contention who's not again i don't know if this is the exact order for who's actually sitting in second place right now I'm pretty sure it's actually Chris Bay and Ace Austin and then Catch-22 actually each are sitting with the – in first and second. If it was to end here, I think those two are the ones that are moving on. But, yeah, you have Chris Bay and Ace Austin with 12 points. And you have Francesco here at TJP, L. Lindemann and Alex Zane, Teton and Bushi, and Leo – Yo, Leo, the Russian Yo, all with uh, 10 points. So you have a really tight race here. All these teams need to keep winning – in their last two nights, nobody has an easy path to to the finals. Nobody here. Like, if Chris Bay and Ace Austin do pick up another two points, they still are not guaranteed into the finals. If they do a win and a loss and the other all the other teams win, they don't mm-hmm. guarantee themselves. It, there's a lot of interesting ways this can go. But below the elimination line are Wild Hips, uh, Flying Tiger, Doki and Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Kevin Knight and Kushida and Dick Togo and show again, all these teams are eliminated from contention. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What a tournament so far. So far, so, so far, so crazy. I, I really have enjoyed it so far, <laughs> but we are, um, I know it's that one. I'm going to move on to the next night and Mel's actually picking a house of torture match as her pick I for the know. night. I don't but understand. But given I, I the results of this match, you will know exactly why I picked this match as my pick. Um, coming into this, um, I thought, I thought, they tricked me. They got me. I thought we were seeing a turnover of House of Torture. They brought out Togo with them. And Evil and Yudro going, no, no, we can do this. 
we can do this on our own. We got you. You can go to the back. And I'm sitting there like, oh, my God, Togo's actually going to the back. No way. <gasps> They're not going to be dicks. They're not going to be Togo's. <gasps> my, my exact note there was, uh, how's the tradition of Togo in the back? Don't expect him to stay back there. That was my was exact say, notes there. I have been to some of the most amazing fish markets in Europe, on the Western coast, on the Eastern coast. Let me tell you, I have never smelt so much fish as I did at the beginning of this match. Yeah. I, I did not buy it for one second. No, no, not even a little bit. Um, getting into the match, though, that sidewalk slam by Coglin was unreal. The power that he slammed into there, I thought that they were going to actually, like, mess up the floorboards again. It was unreal. Um I, I have to shout out Gabe Kidd calling out the brain buster. Uh, first thing, I'm like, oh, tens on. And then I'm like, cloudy with a chance of meatballs saying what I'm doing. Yes, it was amazing. Um, not being able to pull off that brain buster. But let me tell you, the chop he followed up with was definitely a shout out to uh, t um, not only Kent Tenzon, but to Cozy Lariat there, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kojima Satoshi. That chop, whew, that that thing reverberated off of the, oh, uh, the so. walls of the, the building in there. Um, I got to say it again, tenderize them titties. They were certainly tenderized after that. Um, I think it was um, Yudro that he nailed that chop on. If I remember correctly, his his boobie was pretty red after that. And and Togo, or sorry, uh, Yujiro and Evil have been staying very tan throughout um, this tournament. So to be able to see the difference in in color tone, it warmed my heart, warmed my yeah. black heart. <laughs> um, Oh, the booze. I was like, there's a very big spelling error on there. I had no idea what I wrote down. The booze gave away what was happening next. Um, so the booze of the crowd let me know that, you know, the fish had indeed returned to the match and had brought another fish with him. Um, of course, Togo and Sho showing up to this match, um, trying to be a, a factor in the House of Torture. Um, I got very, very angry for like a split second in this match when I saw Coglin getting pinned and I'm like, no, 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 we're not going to do this again. But the pop I gave when I saw not only Coglin pop out, but end up turning it around and pinning Yujiro in return to get the win. Ah, oh, this... Mm -hmm. This was my choice because this was the breath of fresh air to see the Dojo boys pick up a win over quite possibly the most dastardly, underhanded, like most manipulative, most hated team in NJPW to see the good guys finally get that one up. Ah, oh. yes. Andre, how did this make you feel? I am completely with you, Mel. I absolutely love th that fact that they won this again. The cheating. I was really, I was really enjoying this match. The fact that like evil would go to cheat and then he wouldn't stop. And then he would just do another move. I would, and hit, same with Yujiro. I was really enjoying that. Mm -hmm. And then the cheating proceeded. And I was like, oh, because Coggin and kid were looking so good. In it. And then that ending where evil gets that chair booted into his face and then Coggin runs Yujiro into show on the apron and then gets that bridging fallaway slam mm -hmm. on you to get that win. I just, mm -hmm. I, I really thought they were getting screwed over. And because when they did that in Yujiro pin Coglin after that shirt DDT, I really was like, I, I was literally about to yell, yell the F word. And it would have been at like 730 in the morning. I would have been yelling this. <laughs> The mom would have killed I me. I did. Um, I was swearing already because I thought it was over then. <laughs> yeah, I was ready to. And then he kicks out. I'm just like, oh, thank you, Christ. And then the, they get the win. I was just, I was so happy. I mm -hmm. was so happy, man. That was, 
again, and you can see the elation on these guys getting their first and probably only win of this tournament. It was huge. It was huge. To quote Donald Trump, it was huge. Huge. Oh, God. Oh, you said to say it, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> it's better than uh, Pop and House of Torture. Not by much. Actually, no, I think House of Torture, I'd rather deal with them than that guy. But we are going to move on to the next night's nice evening. This is, the, um, this is one of the matches I was really considering picking up. some my... sadomasochistic stuff there, then, my friend. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was debating picking this one, but the other one, they just have a little bit of pull towards the main event. But the Empire, all, it was the Battle of the Empire. Mm. I, and it's watching the four of them come out all together in as an entrance and not doing as two separate teams was actually impressive showing the camaraderie between all these guys and what this team means to each other and just absolutely phenomenal match man uh they had a mascot i guess they got a mascot now i don't know what it is but they got a mascot now <laughs> Um, I think it was for a restaurant or something. I'm not entirely. I don't know, but sure. but he, but he but he did. But Gideon did say that Okan had 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 arranged this, and that that thing is their new mascot. So again, I don't know. I I just don't. But absolutely love. I absolutely love this match. Just everything these guys did together. Just knowing each other's moves while also being able to get your moves on the other team. It, it's that. It's a. Uh, absolutely phenomenal like just that the that i love that it's just a cheap killer into like a almost like a gtr elbow drop mm -hmm. that that uh con and hanari do again the stuff like i love that the fact that they did they differentiated themselves from the team of Cobb and okan but still using like the imperial drop and things like that but have made their own and then davis and fletcher just there was a spot where they stopped the, the tko on fletcher and then they tossed Ocon and then they just like both Aussie open just straight up kick Hanari in the face. Well, he's like bent over. It was like, I'm just like, Oh Jesus. It was just, I, I and then there was an exchange of everybody just hitting forearm to each other. Like one would hit one to them and then a super kick to another. And then it just went around like, and everybody did it twice. And then they all just collapsed to the mat. I was like, Oh, and then there was this big, huge brawl. Hanari got a spin kick and Khan hit a Mishinoku driver on Davis. I thought that's where it was over, but Davis kicks out right at like that 2.8, 2.9, just kicks it out. I'm just like, oh my God. And this is where Ozzy Open get, come back. They hit the tombstone and set out pile drivers to Khan and Hanare. Then they hit the sandwich clotheslines on both of them face to face. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where Khan ended up rolling out of the ring and Ozzy Open hit Coriolis on Hanari to get the win. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal match. This match, um, I actually didn't mention on the first one that LA Do that both the teams are eliminated. Mm -hmm. LA Dojo and uh, uh, House Torture were eliminated. And this one, both these teams were contention. But Hanare and Okan losing here puts them below the elimination line. They cannot get into the fight. They cannot get into the final. So Aussie Open eliminating their cohorts in Hanare and Okan because technically on paper they have only one match left in this tournament because they they're one of their next cup two matches is the forfeit. So they've already got those two points. They cannot get enough points to even get in contention to be in the in the finals. So mm -hmm. sad to say. Yeah. 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 This this match, as you said, very, very fun. Um, I've really enjoyed also, um, just to, to add to the end there, um, the passionate speech that um, Gideon gave the crowd mm -hmm. um, in, in English. Um, so, like, I'm sure there is translation for the crowd afterwards, um, but, like, for, from an English perspective, very passionate speech about teamwork and camaraderie and, you know, being the best version of yourself you could be. I was not expecting such an emotional um, no. speech out of Gideon. And I, I really enjoyed it. And especially while he's giving this speech, the four members of United Empire are comforting each other, holding ice packs for each other, congratulating each other on, on a, a great match. This team, despite being what they would consider a heel team, 
very much can, becoming one of the most respected and team orientated factions that I have ever seen forming in NJPW, even more so than LIJ, it almost pains me to say. And I'm kind of thinking for it. They've kind of become that almost star representation of what it means to be a faction. And I absolutely love it. Yeah, me, I, again, I have been loving this team since it was formed. And they just keep getting better and better as you add people. But you mm-hmm. see the camaraderie when two, fa- two of the teams in the faction have to battle each other. And there's no hard feelings at the end. I, I, it, I, I just, I love this. I love this group. I just absolutely do. True so, friendship yeah. right there. Yeah, true, true camaraderie in their team. So we move on to the, oh, so what would have been the next match of the evening would have been Sonata and Naito taking mm-hmm. on General's Jewel, but it is a forfeit by General's Jewel. And that two points keeps Sonata and Naito in this, and they still have two more matches to go. Even after this forfeit, they have two matches to go, so they are still in this. With, with even with the forfeit here, they are still in this um, at ten points. Um, the next match of the evening was Bishimon, <laughs> Kushihashi, and Hokugoto taking on the team of Lance Archer and Minoru Suzuki. Now, this was absolute just reckless fun. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Archer and Suzuki just trying to run rush shot over these guys, and like Goto just taking the brunt of the punishment in this match. It's just mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Suzuki slapping the crap out of Goto mm-hmm. and just he he rear naked choked him at one point, almost putting him out, and he's ready to pass out, and Suzuki just lets him go and tries to pin him. I'm like, I, I was I was dumbfounded by that. I thought Me too. why didn't you get the why didn't you just keep holding it? He was about to pass out. It's the same thing you get with, with Sonata though, with his cold skull. They're about to pass out from the pain. Then he's like, No, nah, I'm gonna do moonsault. Again, it's it's that on the yeah, it's 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 <laughs> that kind of it's that mentality of like oh I can do better, but um, the end of the match came. Uh, he reapplied the rear naked choke, tries to gotch, but Goda ends up backdropping Suzuki, but he Suzuki gets another rear naked choke, but he's run into the corner, um, and then Archer comes in and there was a big fight, and then in the end, Bishamon gets a Ushiguroshi super kick combo into the Shoto, and they get the win. Um, Big thing for Goto and Yoshihashi here, keeping themselves alive in this tournament. And then you have uh, Suzuki and Archer um, being eliminated here. Sorry to say, they are they have been eliminated with this loss. Again, but absolutely phenomenal. Just watching like, Goto and Suzuki when they're trading shots and they're battling mm-hmm. each other. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were. Do you remember the the matches that they had for the never open weight title back in the day that resulted in Minoru Suzuki actually losing a hair versus hair match, too, mm-hmm. where he ended up having to to shave his little. I don't even know what we would call that on the back of his head. The little tail, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the the one thing that I wanted to note on this match that has been amusing me this entire tour, obviously, is Lance Archer intimidating uh, commentary. Um, this, I think, was the most hilarious interaction. Oh, I forgot to talk about first it. First of all, oh. first of all, I have never seen Milano move so gosh dang fast, even in the ring, like <laughs> to get up out of his seat. It was one smooth motion of just throwing off the headphones and taking off. He was Don Callis gone by like when he saw Archer in the same way that Don Callis would take the heck off when he used to see Minoru Suzuki coming. That was exactly what I love seeing. But then to see Archer just sit down and commentary next to Liger and Liger just hand him the microphone. They just, Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Yeah. Fuck you. Okay. Okay. (laughs) That was just yeah, classic Archer. It was funny, but it was serious. It was exactly what I expect out of Lance Archer. And it set up for the intensity of this match, because as you mentioned, this match was intense back and forth, back and forth for these guys. I absolutely loved it. But as you said, Goto pinning Suzuki. Never, I, I definitely did not expect this result in this match. No, I'm not surprised to see it due to the fact you kind of keep Bishamon alive in this. That that mm-hmm. doesn't surprise me. Okay. Yeah. 
So I would have liked to see Archer and, and Suzuki pr go a little bit more just because of how much we've seen Bushimon, but, but Bushimon is very, very popular. Even with another two points, quite some time. even with another two points, they, I still think there, it would be a very, very long shot. And that mm -hmm. would actually limit, uh, would Bishamon would have been sitting in a spot where they would have been again, so far out, there would have been a lot just to get again. Mm -hmm. it, there is a team at eight points after this that are still technically in the running for second place. Again, mm -hmm. I think everybody's battling for second place at this point, as long as Aussie Open can pick up another win. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's kind of battling for a second. But again, it's all coming down to these last two nights. It's going to be a huge spot. But we are moving on to the main event of the evening, and that is my pick of the night. That is Team Bebop, uh, Toriano, and, and Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on Shane Hayes, Mike and Nichols, the mighty Don't Neal. I absolutely, <laughs> like, I love these. And TMDK is finally where they belong in this tournament, in the main event. They should have been on the main event every night. It's simple as that. They're they're the best tag team in this tournament. Um, Tanahashi at the start of this match. UE might disagree. Tanahashi at the start of this match starts playing air guitar, and so Haste decides to play air drums to to come back at Tanahashi with his air guitar. I absolutely thought that was hilarious. I was like, yes, yes. Oh, it was just I just love that. I absolutely love that. Um, but yeah, it's great old match. Tana Hashi grabbing Nichols. Um, sorry, that's the wrong spot. Um, Nichols getting Yano in like the half camel clutch, and then just like, like, like hooking his oh, fingers the nose, in the yeah. nose and like pulling him in the nose. I'm like, I'm like, okay, T and the K is easily the heels in this. I absolutely was. I, I it was so good. <laughs> um, Hayes ends up pulling Yano out of the ring and just like after he got tagged in and just just runs him into the barricade. He's just like screw you, just 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 I'm gonna beat the crap out of you, little the little effer. And like it's, it's just I I love seeing the heel the heelness come out of Team DK in this. I thought it did a great spot. Um, Tana catches the boot from Nichols and just gets this beautiful dragon screw. And then Hayes comes in and catches his boot, beautiful dragon screw. And then hits the scoop slam on Nichols and does that second rope. Like flips sent on and gets a two count. Uh, like, oh, but then Nichols, like, back within like 30 seconds, hits his big, like, Death Valley driver onto Tanahashi. Just like, and then both men are down. And like, this is where Nichols crawls over to tag in Hayes. And then Yano is tagging in, uh, or Tana's tagging in Yana. But it's a, that, that reset of, of the spot. Like, I, I'm lo I just love both these teams back and forth. And then, um, it was, or was it? um hot tana like or nichols goes for the or team hits the big ending on yana or not tanahashi yano breaks it up so nichols goes to try to hit the suplex on tanahashi but he stops him and hits the twist and shout um and he goes to run but then nichols just picks him up and like spins him into like a power bomb and gets a two on tana like just the back and forth it's just and then uh team dk tries to get thunder valley Tana fights out and pushes TMDK into each other. Yano hits them both in the crotch. Again, I know we complain about with 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 uh, how's the torture all the time with all the crotch shots, but like Yano isn't doing it every single match. He, he's not he's not blatantly cheating every time. Yeah, he pulls the t the turnbuckle thing off every time, but it's. Mm -hmm. It's not every time. Like, Yano did it a couple of matches ago. Or, uh, Tana did it a couple of matches ago. Yano did it this time. But it's not, like, it's it's not, like, everything they're doing is cheating. And I, it, it, and this one, again, I can, this is, I see Tana and Yano more as the underdog team in this, even though, like, Tanahashi is the, the more experienced veteran in all this. It's, you look at it, he's like, no, you need to rely, he needs to rely on those things because Yano's not quite. And he hits the double low blow. Tana hits uh, Sling Blade on, uh, on uh, I think it was Nichols. I can't remember mm -hmm. who he, I didn't write who he pinned. Yano hit the power bomb and Tana Hashi with the high fly flow to get the win. Um, Team Bebop keeping themselves in contention for second place. They cannot point enough to take a first place. Because mm -hmm. great, and I will get to that in just a second here. Um, before, But I'll let Mel get to her opinions on this match before I go into the final point totals. For sure. Yeah, I don't have a ton to add. I feel that you covered a lot there. I just felt that the teams worked very, very well together. And what I did enjoy about both of these teams throughout this entire tournament is their ability to both be that comedic relief, but that serious 
match at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, all four of these guys just are very, very good at that in-ring psychology, that storytelling, but also their in-ring performance and ability. Um, it makes for a very, very good match. Um, even before I'd seen this whole match, I had high hopes for it, and it, it certainly did not let me down. Um, yeah, if, if you're looking for a really, really great comedy but serious match, this is the match you want to watch. Definitely, absolutely phenomenal. Man. But I'm going to switch over to my notes again. <laughs> you can see right here, I got the point breakdown. Um, at, up at the top, Ozzy Open, Kyle Fletcher, Mark Davis with 14 points. Again, they aren't, they get, they only have, these guys only have one match left because the December 11th show that they are on, they will not be competing in a match. So there is a possibility that if Shane, Team DK, Sonata, Naito, and Bishamon all get the 14 points, Ozzy Open can lose their top spot and can get taken out of the finals completely. So Ozzy Open needs, guarantees their, guarantees them going into the finals if they win on December 9th. Again, are, it's all up in the air if they don't. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Shane Hayes, Mikey Nichols uh, with 10, Sonata, Naito with 10, Bishamon, and Rigoda with 10 all have the ability, if Ozzy Open doesn't win on, the, on December 9th, to become the number one team going in. All these teams are still in contention for second, along with Team Bebop, Toriano, and Hirsch Tanahashi with eight points. But there is a caveat. They are going to need to win both their final matches to get that get a spot, I think, because you're going to have too many other situations here where they may not be able to like be in like in that spot where it's it's, it's kind of all up in the air. It, again, it the, you look at these five teams; it could be any of these five teams in there. But I'm it's I, it's a guarantee almost that Aussie Open are getting in. To, it's almost almost a guarantee, Aussie Open. If Aussie Open doesn't get in, then Team Bebop cannot get in. Just by math alone, that means the other all all the other three, two of the other three teams have gotten to fourteen, and Team Bebop will be eliminated too. It's just you have so there's so many variables going into this these final two nights. It's going to be very interesting, and I I I really hope Aussie Open cements their spot in the finals with the win on the ninth and then you can see tmdk get the second spot on the final night i hope i hope that's what i hope i really hope for a tmdk ue final that's uh, that's mm. really what i want personally i know not you probably want an aussie open lij final i'm guessing <laughs> you know what at this point I, I'm actually very undecided on who I'd like to see at the end because I feel I've seen enough combinations of these teams fighting that I know who I like seeing fighting and who I don't. Um, yeah. Who I don't like fighting is really at the end of that, that list. So as long as they're not there, I'm happy camper. But um, I, I think at this point, if Aussie Open isn't in the finals, I'll, I'll be surprised just because of how high they are right now. Um, could we see an all Australian final? I wouldn't be mad about it. You never, <laughs> you really never know. Mm. The big thing is Aussie Open's taking on TMDK on that night, so mm. like I almost be like, an indicator. I want to see Aussie Open to win it to get in it, but I don't want to see Shane Hayes and Mikey Nichols lose because I want them to win their last two matches. So it guarantees mm -hmm. them in the finals. I would love to see a Team K Aussie Open final. We don't know. Again, there's so many things in the air. I'm super excited for the finals weekend. We will be coming back next week, with uh, most likely on Wednesday, mm -hmm. with the mat a show covering the seventh, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Uh, to uh, leading up to hopefully Friday, dropping a show like a week from today, dropping a show about the uh, the whole sh card off from the 14th. Hopefully, mm -hmm. we're hoping to do that again, time <laughs> permitting, schedules permitting. We have a few mm -hmm. things to go over, so yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. lots of stuff to go over. What a tournament it's finally coming to an end here, and my endless nights of editing and thumbnail making will be coming to an end. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to appreciate the break. <laughs> 
though I have to say I have enjoyed watching this tournament so far. The watching part has definitely been my favorite part <laughs> by <laughs> far. Whew, Andre, it sounds like we're coming to the end of our show. We should talk about this amazing energy drink and QR code down here. Rogue Energy in your Mina Shaker Kawa special there. What are you drinking in there today, Andre? Uh, it's got juice in there. No no Rogue uh, Energy this morning. Uh, I just decided to go with juice this morning. <laughs> hey, I mean, it's early. We'll get your energy in there later. <laughs> I've got energy. I had a good night's nice sleep. So <laughs> hey, there we go. There we go. So Rogue Energy, as we mentioned, is a vegan, cruelty free, and amazing energy source for you. If you are doing gaming, if you are working out, if you just are getting up and need morning coffee and don't have any. That's what this girl does. Um, tons of different flavors. Um, the amazing shaker that Andre got over there, um, $17.99 with tax. You get to pick six different flavors of your choice that they have available to try from energy to hydration to uh, protein supplementation. You want to check them out, see all the different kinds of flavors that they have. If you decide to order today, you can use our little code scanning at the bottom there. It's OLE pods. That's plural O L E P O D S for 10% off of your entire order. <gasps> Whew, that was a mouthful, hey? <laughs> yeah. So from there, I want to give a big thank you to our friends at OLE Pod, at, at the, our local submission podcast network, um, for being uh, for bringing us aboard and being partners with us. It's a reason we have Rogue Energy as a sponsor on here. So thank you to mm-hmm. our local establishment. You can find them on twitch.tv slash our local establishment or on Instagram at uh, OLE Pods. Uh, there is a TikTok coming. We will have that for you eventually. Again, nothing's happen happening with it quite yet but that will be coming again also want to uh say thank you to our good friends over at backbreaker video our good buddy mike the ref for simulcasting us on his youtube page you can find him on twitch at twitch.tv slash mike the ref uh and you can see all the wonderful videos that he has up on backbreaker video you may be watching us there so if you're watching us on backbreaker video please check out our channel, uh, Andre Melba Wrestling Talk. You might be watching us there right now. Thank you so much. Or if you are, um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at that Canada guy, Instagram at that Canada dude, on other social medias that are popping up at that Canada guy. As I just going to lock them up for if Twitter ever falls <laughs> apart. And to follow Melba, you can follow me. Follow me on Twitter at Collins Melball. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Melball Collins. And you can find both Andre and myself on our Facebook fan page, Andre and Melball's Wrestling Talk. That being said, Andre, if you have nothing left to say to our amazing viewers, I am your Melball. That is your Andre. We will see you next time. Adios. Thank you.